Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to Kingdom Apostolic Ministries. We are so happy that you have decided to join us this morning for our Marriage Ministry Sunday School class. I am Evangelist Kim Harris, and here with me this morning is my husband, Deacon Jeffrey Harris. Praise the Lord, everybody. Today, our lesson will be focused on blended families. We will share biblical truths as well as our own personal experiences of coming together as a blended family. We will be discussing the ups and downs of what makes a blended family operate as a harmonious unit and the delicate aspects of blended families. We pray that our discussion today will be a blessing to you and your family. Please join us in a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for giving us this opportunity for your people in the marriage ministry of the Sunday School of Law. Speaking about blended families, not only the blended families, Lord, but all families. Lord, we know that the Lord let the enemy come in to kill, steal, and to destroy. But we also know, that, Lord, that you come to your life and that more than you. So, Lord, we pray that somebody, some family, Lord, will be strengthened and encouraged in this Sunday school, Lord, that they may become everything that you want them to be. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, honey, for that prayer. And so let's look at the definition of blended families. So a blended family is a family where at least one parent has children that are not legally or biologically related to the other parent or spouse. And either parent or both may have children from their previous relationships or marriages, as well as having children together. Understanding these basic dynamics of a blended family can be essential for embracing the strengths and the challenges when working through the differences. Today, we will focus on four challenges of blended families and the strengths associated with each of those challenges. And so the first challenge that we're gonna discuss today um, is related to children's emotional need for attention. And so the strengths that are associated with this challenge um, is giving each child individual attention um, is very important because positive attention can strengthen your bond with your stepchildren. And so I'm gonna ask my husband to share his personal experience um, regarding this challenge, um, children, uh, emotional need for attention. Well, I think uh, is, uh, every individual child uh, have different uh, needs. Mm -hmm. So you have to, uh, as a parent, attend to uh, that child's need. Uh, it, may, it may not be as uh, your child need or the, uh, the biological child or the self-child need, but uh, they all have different needs. So uh, whether it be in school, whether it be sports, the homework, you have to uh, be there for them, um, whatever that's that's your first thing, or maybe you could go to them and ask them, maybe they can't won't, won't come to you. Mm -hmm. So if you see a, a need that they need a, a need, mm -hmm. so if you go to them as a parent, you know, ask them, you know, if you could help them, but sometimes a child won't come to you, mm -hmm. you know, so that you can build that uh, relationship up with that child, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, but uh, don't leave that child out. Just mm -hmm. um, say, well, that child didn't come to me, so, you know, um, mm -hmm. 
I'm not going to uh, that child, uh, but that's not the right thing to do as being a parent, whether you yourself or the biological. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I definitely agree. And so another um, strength to this challenge of addressing the children's emotional need for attention um, would uh, consist of both um, biological parent and step parent um, attending each child's um, activities um, and making sure that that child does not feel um, overlooked or favored over the other children. Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, that's, you know, uh, uh, you can go, go to that uh, child's game, you know, get that child's game or whatever activities they have in school, you know, be involved. Uh, not just only your child, but the stepchild also. Uh, let that child know that you are there for them. You know, uh, uh, you're one family now, so mm -hmm. you know, uh, therefore you have to treat that child as uh, mm -hmm. as your own child. Mm -hmm. You know, don't put any child before the other one. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, they have to be equal. Mm -hmm. uh, although you may not have that bond with that. With that uh, stepchild as you would have with your biological child, but um, the things in the, in the home mm -hmm. and whatever you do has to be have to be equal. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree um, because that also that positive interaction um, with those um, with the children, especially stepchildren, helps to build a healthier um, developmental. Um, um, cognizant of who they are and also it allows them to feel like they are um, actual part of the family that they are loved. Yeah. And so the second challenge um, that we are going to talk about regarding blended families um, is the conflict with stepchildren. And so one of the strengths to this challenge is trying not to push them to be your best friend, um, but work to gain um, your stepdaughter or your stepson's um, trust by keeping the line of communication open and being emotionally um, available towards them. And, and so we kind of touched a little bit about that with the first um, um, conflict of the children's paying attention um, to the catering, I would say, to the children's emotional need for attention. Um, this also, uh, the conflict with uh, stepchildren, um, this is also another area where um, keeping, paying attention to their emotional need and keeping that um, communication line open um, so that they know that you are available for them in, in, in whatever they need to talk about um, so that um, they feel that they can trust you as stepfather, myself as stepmother to come to us with any concerns that they may have. Uh, and, and so do you have something to share with the class about this particular conflict? Well, uh, you know, the Bible uh, tells us, you know, uh, raise the child up in the way you should go. Mm -hmm. So, um, as a parent, uh, uh, you can uh, uh, go to that child, the same child, or either your uh, biological child, but sometimes that biological child uh, feel inferior because mm -hmm. of the step child. Mm -hmm. So, you have to make them both. Uh, Feel comfortable mm -hmm. and at ease mm -hmm. in, in whatever you do, in all your decisions, mm -hmm. you have to make them feel uh, 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 comfortable mm -hmm. and secure in whatever you do that you're not putting one over the other. Mm -hmm. You know, although, as I said before, that you have a bond with your, your biological child, mm -hmm. but you still have to um, make that. that so I try to feel that, that, that they are important and that, um, that they are needed also. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I totally agree. 
And one another strength to this challenge of the conflict with stepchildren um, is to avoid displaying favoritism um, towards your biological children. Um, even though, again, you've already stated, um, you is more likely that you will have uh, uh, a bond and a, and a different type of connection with your own child, right? Um, but your stepchildren should not feel that they are neglected or treated poorly. I mean, so with this in mind, you will have to be very intentional in treating the children equally to avoid hurt feelings. So, so honey, you've already kind of touched on that as far as making sure the children feel equal, uh, making sure that we're not showing favoritism. Um, and that is a big, um, a, 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 a big part of making sure that stepchildren um, feel accepted. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, what I felt in whatever you do, whether you're going out for uh, a wall, uh, you're going out for ice cream, you're going out for um, any uh, function, uh, you have to involve that, uh, that stepchild. Um, do that. A lot of that's that's the child to feel barrier, or not even letting your child feel barrier, but uh, the balance there, mm -hmm. you know, and um, inviting everyone to uh, be a participant of whatever you do as a family. Don't leave any anybody out. Uh, uh, no matter if it's a male, or female, or uh, maybe that person or that child is deserved that day, but you're going out for a family get together anyway. So you have to involve that child. You just can't leave that child at home or, or with a setter or uh, mm -hmm. this, this child that could be involved. Right. Yes. It, it's gonna be a family thing. Right. Yes, yes. And 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 that is so important because when we um got married um, we had teenagers, <laughs> yes. right? And so one of the big things that the that we experience in this challenge regarding the conflict with stepchildren is that they uh, wasn't shy in saying, "You're not my dad," or "You're not my mom." And so and so we understood we we understood right that we were not, but we were coming together to build a family unit. And so we. Um, had to reassure um, our children that um, we, in fact, were their parents <laughs> and that we, in fact, were working hard to build this blended family um, that everyone felt accepted and important. And so that's uh, something to always consider. Um, the third challenge that we would be discussing um, is step parent disciplining. So it's important for biological parent and step parent to sit down together first to determine what the household rules will be so that children will know what the expectations and consequences are if household rules um, are broken. And so again, I'm going to ask my husband to share um, any comments that he might have regarding this area. Well, uh, I feel like you can't uh, come in uh, uh, and uh, strong arm of uh, uh, any stepchild, especially when a stepchild is uh, a teenager already. Mm -hmm. uh, you go uh, with ease with the child, you know, make that child comfortable with you. You know, talk to that child. You can't don't come in demanding and uh, saying, uh, "Oh, this is what it's going to be." Uh, no matter what they were doing before you, mm -hmm. you just can't come in and say, "This is what it's going to be." <laughs> and, you know, so that you, whatever you were doing before, uh, would not be anymore. You have to uh, go in and ask at ease. You know, you just can't, you just, you just can't come in because you never accomplish anything or get anything done that way. That child will always be um, 
were always rebelled against for that. Mm -hmm. You know, so but at the same time, you can't uh, you can't uh, let a child get away with something, and uh, your child uh, you you kind of strong on your child. You know, everybody knows this vice vice versa. You know, you have to get out from that also. So, so what I hear you saying, honey, is getting sensitive um, to the changes yes. that uh, children are experiencing um, and um, allowing time for adjustment, um, but also um, um, having those rules in place uh, so that they can um, work towards this new family system and those new expectations and um, and things like that. Yes. Yeah, I feel like uh, normally if you go in with the right attitude, the right set of mind, you know, you pray about it, then mm -hmm. that, that child eventually will come around. Mm -hmm. if, if a child mm -hmm. is having problems mm -hmm. um, of, of how the family structure, mm -hmm. that child will eventually come around mm -hmm. if you go into it like in the right frame of mind mm -hmm. and not strong arm. Mm -hmm. so, uh, they, they will see that you're doing it with love. And they, they will see, uh, they will see the love in it. Mm -hmm. So they will, uh, they turn around. Okay, all right, yeah. Well, we've experienced that, right? We, yes, we have. <laughs> we have. So uh, another strength to this uh, challenge of step parent disciplining um, is coming together as a blended family means that both parents and step parent have to work together as a team, right? In order to come together as a united front um, on disciplinary issues. And so coming together on the united front, like we had to do that, right? Um, so that there was consistency, right? In, in the things that we were expecting of them. And so what are some of your um, experiences even in this area? Just, just as a united front, come uh, parents come together as a united front because kids tend to play one parent against the other, right? And so when we're a united front, it's hard for them to do that, right? Right? We stand uh, in together, right? And we demonstrate um, the family principles and expectations that we're wanting to extend to them. We actually demonstrate that when we are uh united front in our decisions well uh, uh, in my opinion you should uh you should not discuss uh, the discipline mm -hmm. uh in front of the children mm -hmm. it's uh, children or you're not good children mm -hmm. uh you not discuss uh, the disciplinary in front of them mm -hmm. uh, but um uh, uh get uh, to the side and, and discuss that because if they see that you're discussing uh, the, how we should, should not be disciplined, mm. uh, they will use that <laughs> <laughs> also against you. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's what uh, just uh, mm. get along uh, and come up with a solution mm -hmm. uh, that you both can. Uh, Agree with, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. uh, it's not only the wife solution or the husband solution. It's mm -hmm. both of you agree on mm -hmm. how the situation would be handled, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, mm -hmm. that child have to go by that, mm -hmm. by what you agree with. I love that, honey. When you say um, making sure that. Um, those type of discussions of how we're going to discipline our children, do them uh, in private mm -hmm. so that they're not privy to those conversations. Mm -hmm. uh, because a lot of times we're probably, parents are probably going to disagree mm -hmm. um, amongst themselves of how we're going to discipline our children because we more than likely have different um, styles of parenting, right? And so as parents are working through learning each other's parenting style and 
and, and, and learning what's going to work for this new family, then it's very important that those conversations um, and solutions are done in private. And so the kids um, know that when we, when parents um, implement of those disciplinary um, um, methods that the parents are um, a united front. I mean, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Anything uh, else? Well, yeah, you know, and also I feel like, you know, uh, if um, that child knows um, whether it be your biological <clears throat> child or your stepchild, again, that uh, child, um, if they have higher responsibilities as far as cleaning up the room, keeping the room clean, um, 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 washing the dishes, cleaning, cleaning up, whatever that may be, um, that child should do that. Mm -hmm. um, not wait till uh, mm -hmm. like a, a Friday <clears throat> uh, when they know that uh, you're getting paid and, <laughs> and, they, and you know, and, and, uh, they want some money or what, or what have you, you know, but. You have to instill in that child, you know, uh, no, uh, this should have been done every day, not just on Friday. So when you come home, so you got to, uh, if you were to give that, you wore that child something or uh, give that child uh, any kind of war, that, that war had to be with them until um, that child gets it, you know, gets it that, um, they cannot um, just clean up or whatever that's expected of them on that Friday just to get something out of you. Mm -hmm. um, it has to be done responsible uh, when they're supposed to do it every day. And consistently right here. Yeah. And so um, I think you're getting a little bit ahead of me. And so, uh, so we're going to talk a little bit more okay. about um, this, um, how the expectations are, you know, as far as uh, children following the rules, mm -hmm. right, the new rules. So this fourth um, challenge of blended families kind of address, you know, some of what you've already mm -hmm. shared um, and it's um, disagreements about new family rules, right? Okay. Uh, <laughs> so one of the strengths to this challenge um, is Talk about um, our parenting styles. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we we take the time to discuss that. Talk about the different parenting styles that we have, that parents have, um, because it's likely that parent styles are different, right? So we parents, step parents, biological parent, take the time to discuss um, your parenting style uh, with each other. Um, in order to unify the family, uh, again, because it's likely um, that you both will have different parenting styles. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, if one um, parent, you know, well, uh, parenting style is different from the other, uh, they should not express that in front of the child. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I don't do this for, you know, the, the husband, he can't say, well, the father can't say, well, I don't do it this way. Or the wife, mm -hmm. the mother, she can't say, well, I don't do it this way. Uh, we have to do it this way. Mm -hmm. No, he has to come up uh, with an agreement, uh, probably you with know, from that child. Mm -hmm. But you can't discuss that in front of the child because uh, mm -hmm. that will always be used against you. And if they will see mm -hmm. that weakness or that, that family structure, mm -hmm. that's not there. Mm -hmm. it, it'll be a uh, I'm dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so again, uh, you allude to the uh, the strength of parents having a united front, right? Making sure that you're standing in agreement, um, you, that you're consistent with um, disciplinary uh, decisions um, so that, again, it promotes you know, the family structure, the healthy family structure that, that you're aiming for. And also another uh, um, strength to um, this uh, challenge of disagreements about new family rules, um, don't have rules 
uh, open for interpretation. <laughs> like sit down with all of your children and explain what uh, you decided as parents will be fair for the blended family. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think um, that's, that's a big bit to do because of, of at least one of the, the, the children was say, uh, well, I didn't know this, <laughs> I didn't know that. They did, but they yeah. know, but, <laughs> yeah. but, but since you didn't express that, mm -hmm. they would uh, say they did not know. So a lot of things, uh, of topics you have to um, bring out and uh, discuss them before, beforehand. And sounds like over communicate at times so that um they understand the expectation mm -hmm. and the consequences. And the consequences. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um so um all of this is wonderful um uh, information um that really really supports um becoming a harmonious um family unit. So when thinking about the ups and downs of what makes a blended family operate as a harmonious unit, of 1 Corinthians um, chapter 13, verses 4 and 8 comes to mind. And it states, love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It's not proud. It does not dishonor others. It's not self-seeking. It's not easily anger. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. And so gleaning from this text helped my husband and I when we experienced the challenges of becoming, uh, of coming together as a blended family, as well as embracing the fact that marriage is a covenant ordained by God so that we could give our children the experience of a loving, nurturing family unit, which was something that they had never really fully experienced. And we felt it was something that God wanted for both of us as parents, um, as well as for our children. And so when we think of God's covenant of marriage, um, Genesis 2, um, verse 24 says, Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. We learned as husband and wife, the strength in becoming uh, and coming together as one flesh meant that what I have uh, belongs to my husband is his as well. And what he has belonged to me. So it became mine. And so this just didn't stop or wasn't solely based on the material things, but it included our children as well. So this biblical truth exposed our own biases and behaviors that often resulted in frustration because we would respond to sensitive family issues based on our own lived experiences. And so as we became more aware of our behaviors, it then became an individual choice for each of us to choose to let go of those behaviors that didn't serve our family well, right? And then turn to God to ask for help. And it was in our prayer time and having faith in God to intervene within us and within our family that we would come to experience the spiritual process of God re-breaking, remaking, and molding us into one flesh. And so Ecclesiastics um, chapter four, uh, verses nine and 10 says, two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. 
Uh, for they, for if they fall, one will lift up his companion, right? But woe to him who is alone when he falls, for he has no one to help him up. This means that neither parent, whether biological or step parent, can vindicate responsibility, right? When when the going gets tough. So so in all or in a nutshell, we can't just throw in the child and, and throw in the towel and abandon the child, right? Um, this was our experience, you know, because we were committed to experiencing the full blessing that God intended for us to have within our blended family. Um, and so I want to hear more from my husband as far as what's your thoughts about um, the, the responsibility of that, that God has given parents to stay in the fight. You know, step parents and biological parents, it gets tough. And, you know, sometimes we want to walk away. I mean, we've experienced that. Like, it got really tough. We had teenagers, right? <laughs> um, but we 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 didn't um, throw in the towel, um, and because we knew that this was something God wanted us to have for ourselves as parents and husband and wife and for our children. Yeah. It's um, you know, it's about the uh, God said, you know, turn up the child mm -hmm. where they should go. Um, they will not be part. But you know, if they do the part, you know, um, they know that they're home, you know, they know how to get back. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, you have to uh, keep them focused, mm -hmm. you know, uh, keep them grounded, mm -hmm. uh, you, know, you know, keep them aware, mm -hmm. you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, this ground, you know, of, of, of their uh, mm -hmm. the age, you know, the age group, um, you have to. Uh, Keep them focused around the age group. Mm -hmm. you know. So as parents and step parents, that that does become a challenge, especially when um, children are teenagers and they're wanting to um, disconnect from the family. Is that developmental stage right to where they identify more um, with their peers? Um, but as parents. You know, standing in the fight, praying and asking God uh, for guidance helps us as parents to guide them, right? And so the most important factor associated with blended families becoming a harmonious family unit will be determined by parents, step-parents, husbands, wives, allowing God to restructure and to rebuild the family foundation. And this requires that we let go of the old, seek God for the new, rely on God for the changes, and have faith in God for the outcomes, right? And so Ephesians chapter one, verse five from the New Living Translation says, God decided in advance to adopt us into his own family by bringing us to himself through Jesus Christ. This is what he wanted to do and it gave him great pleasure. So this makes us all a blended family in Christ. And God as our heavenly father wants us to experience the biblical truth within our earthly families. I hope that we have said something today that has been a blessing to you um, as you continue to let go of the old, seek God for the new, rely on God for the changes, and have faith in God um, for the outcomes. So let us close with prayer. To gracious and eternal Father God, we thank you for this opportunity of sharing your word, and a sharing experiences of what it means to become a harmonious 
a family unit. We thank you, Lord, that we see your hand in this, oh God. We thank you, Lord, for every family member, every parent, every child, oh God, that is represented here on today. We pray that you will continue, Lord God, to bless us according to your will, purpose, and glory. Help us, Lord God, to become the families that honor you. This is our earnest prayer in Jesus' name. We thank you for attending our Sunday school class today. And please be sure to give your Sunday school offering. And we look forward to seeing you in the morning worship service. God bless you all. God bless. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.